Kyle was five. He was a very outgoing child. He was loving and caring and he was friends with everybody. Just had this, uh, I think, picturesque view of the world that, you know, it was a beautiful, wonderful place and he was happy to be a part of it. Emma was a little quieter than Kyle. She was actually the brave one. She was. She loved roller coasters and she was up for anything. She would try anything. Katie, she, she was our baby. She was two. She was out there and independent. and yeah. She was a mommy's girl. Kyle, Katie, and Emma Coble. These are the three children who would not get a chance to grow up and experience another bike ride, birthday, or Christmas. Instead, parents Chris and Lori come to this Lake Forest Cemetery every week to share a few quiet moments at their gravesite. You hope they're in a place together where they're, you know, happy and pain-free and I think the are angels. The accident happened on this stretch of Interstate 5 on May 4th, a day after Kyle's fifth birthday. Lori and her mom had taken the kids to a nearby mall to ride the Ferris wheel. Then it was time to go home. They were waiting to get off at the Oso Parkway exit. It's a drive that Lori had made countless times. They were behind me and I could see him when I looked in the rearview mirror and I know what, you know, I know Kyle was playing his Nintendo that he got for his birthday and Emma was watching a movie and I could see Katie sleeping again and so I was grabbing her toes and telling her to wake up because she had to take a nap when she got home. And that was the last thing I remember. A big rig hauling more than 40,000 pounds of electronics rear-ended the family's minivan. The driver couldn't stop in time because investigators say he was driving too fast. Later, the Kobolds would learn that the driver of the tractor trailer had a history of speeding. In the chaos that followed the crash, the family was split and taken to three different hospitals. Chris was still at work, only to get a phone call that there was an emergency. Then the devastating details started to unfold. The doctor was there and he said, I'm sorry to let you know that Katie has expired. And, you know, you, you can't describe the feeling that hits you. And I'm kind of feeling that weight hit me right now as I'm talking about it. It was followed with another heartbreaking phone call. The first thing I said to him was, please don't tell me Emma's dead. And he said, I'm sorry, but Emma has expired. Oh my. At the hospital, I woke up to Chris and I said, where are the kids? And he said, the girls are dead. And I remember him telling me that Kyle was brain surgery and I told him to go be with them. Chris rushed to Mission Hospital where Kyle and Katie were both taken. First, he stopped to see Katie's body and what would be the last time he would see his little girl. I got to sit with her by myself, uh, hold her hand and brush her hair. She was cold. Oh, Chris, what did you say to her? Can you share that? I said I was sorry. And she was a good girl. And mostly held her hand and just wanted to be with her for a little bit. Then he went to see Kyle. The five-year-old was hit so hard in the crash, his brain stem had separated. He was kept alive artificially until that night when Lori could be rushed to the same hospital. I remember when I believe they first wheeled me in, I looked over at Kyle and his eyes were open. And I remember looking around and my sister-in-law was in the room and my brother and just thinking, he's okay, his eyes are open, he's fine and then starting to real, realize what was going on around me. So although uh, Lori said she doesn't remember this part, uh, after we were there with him for a period of time, Lori said, you know, he needs to be with his, his sisters. So we asked that they stop resuscitation, and so they shut all the equipment off. It kind of became dark and silent, and, mm -hmm. and we sat with him and held his hand. 
Now, six months after the tragedy, the Kobels are celebrating a new chapter in their lives. In a time when their faith is tested to a degree only a few can know, Chris and Lori have just learned they're expecting triplets, two girls and a boy. I think it's a miracle. I think Kyle and then Katie had something to do with it. I think they helped us and they, they made this possible. But they say it's bittersweet. Life is full of reminders of Kyle, Emma, and Katie. Their bedrooms are still intact, untouched. There's a newly planted olive tree with a trunk representing each young life lost too soon. And just a few steps away, a neighborhood park bench serves as a reminder of the strength and support from family and friends. And of course, there are the weekly visits to the cemetery. You definitely have those days uh, you know, where the grief or the anguish just kind of overtakes you some days. And there may be no rhyme or reason why any particular day is that day. They only hope those days are outnumbered by the days of thinking about Kyle, Katie, and Emma. Happy together, perhaps laughing, smiling, and watching from above.